Code signal, arcade, minesweeper. Hello everyone, my name is Joshua and I'll be solving this minesweeper question. Let's sweep right to it. All right. You guys played minesweeper before? It's like an old game, long, long time ago when computers were first made. And here you want to sort of uh, reincarnate that board in summary that um, you would indicate the total number of neighboring cells that has those mines based on a matrix you're given, which is true, false, 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 true, false, something like that, where true means there's a mine, false, there's not. So with that, you should output um, a matrix where it should have a neighboring, um, it's neighboring, it should count the number of neighbors that have a mine. So in this case, since this box right here has one neighbor, even though it's on a mine cell, it's only counting neighbors. I want to be specific about that one. It only sees, um, it's better illustrated in this image, it only sees one mine. Therefore, it is true. I mean, therefore, it only has one mine, and it has one as its total right here, a mine, neighboring mines around it. Here it's two because it's um, it has two mines that's within its vicinity. And here, in this third square right here, you can see it has one mine in its vicinity. So now you know it's not just up, down, left, right neighbors. It's even the day at the corner cases, like up, left, up, right, down, left, down, right, and at fourth. You just can't count the middle square. So in this case, um, let's solve this question. So I guess an easy way to do this, if I were to do um, a rough, uh, we call this a rough iteration. Okay, so first step, I'll iterate through each square without discrimination. And when I iterate through each square, I want to count the neighbors that have a mine. Okay, and what does that mean? So it's going to be up, oh, up left, up middle, up right, down left, down middle, down right, I forgot the middle left and middle right and not the middle middle because that is, uh, it's not being included. All right, so let's think about this. Um, I think all of these could be grouped into a helper method if we were to construct it. Um, this would take about, mm, it would take about columns times rows of the matrix times nine because, oh, not times eight, excuse me. Because we're going to see if, um, if um, we need to check all of these cases, whether we can count it as if there is a mine or not. And once we count the number of neighbors that have a mine, we, um, first we also have to create, uh, <laughs> I forgot the step, create an int matrix for neighbor counting neighboring mines. All right, and here, this is where we input the um, input value of neighboring mines and go to next square after that one and repeat the process. All right, so I would say this would take about, yep, as I said, I already told the time complexity, the space complexity, it's gonna be about um, the same size as the mine. So it's gonna be about row times columns. Um, I was thinking to, let's see how we can create this one. Yeah, I think that's about it. I think it's pretty straightforward. If there's a better solution, guys, post it in the comments below. I was thinking to do a for loop and then we could just create some sort of boundaries with this one. But if we do that, um, we have to create a condition where it ignores when it's landing exactly on the square that the mine is on. And I don't know if that would increase the time complexity and cause issues. That's why I'm gonna try to avoid doing the for loop, which I practiced a while ago. So I'm doing this um, for the first time, guys. So this is gonna be interesting. I wanna remove this one. It's kind of blocking my awesome view. All right, so first let's create a array. First we get rows equals matrix dot length. Then we want to get the columns equal matrix zero dot length. Okay, and we want to get, we want to create a new, a new matrix, call it mines. This new int rows columns action. Now we iterate through each of these arrays. R equals zero. Oh, huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Row equals zero. 
row is less than rows, row plus plus, and four int columns, zero, columns, plus plus, all right, and for the mines, row, column, we want to check neighbors, I'll just make it a check, then we need the matrix and the row and the column that it's on, and once we're done, we return to mines. And now this helper method, it's gonna be quite simple. Shit. Oh. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I accidentally put my foot on the mic. I hope this doesn't affect anything. I mean, that the mic, but the my headphones and it slipped out. So let's hope nothing got broken. I'm gonna call it Matt to make it easier. And we get the row and column position. All right. Uh, and you, we want to get the number of mines. And you turn the mines. Okay. Uh, I think to make this much more nicer, I call it mine M matrix, so you guys can tell the difference of what of what's going on here. All right. Now we iterate through each of these. So if oh yeah. Up left, up right, down left, down right. I think it's better if I show you what I'll be doing. So based on the square, we go minus one, minus one, which is row of minus one, column minus one. Um, we also have to make sure that the boundaries, it doesn't go past the boundaries. So like for example, if it's gonna be negative one, there's no index negative one. So we should just neglect those certain conditions. Um, negative one, negative one. Come to think it, we do do a for loop. It could save us all those conditions though, that if we are in the boundaries, we would avoid, um, we would avoid need to keep checking each of these conditions. We could just create that boundary right away and just start from, I think I would do a for loop. It might save some time complexity after all. I'm gonna go ahead and do that one because I'll show you why. Negative one, zero, negative one, plus one. Okay, so the reason why I would do a for loop, look at this. If I do a for loop, I could just say, okay, this um, um, anything that's row minus one, uh, we don't want to check any condition then if it's there's a negative one value. Um, we just want to start at zero because um, these negative one values, we just say, you know, two, two conditions right here because we don't have to check here because we know that it can't go be above, I mean, below, um, below zero index. Nor can it go above the, it can't be, you know, the length of the, it can index at the length of the matrix. Um, and also we could use these conditions right here. We're, we might be saving a lot of time. Same concept with the columns as well. So I think it's better if I show it to you guys. Um, so I guess what I've been kind of practicing. Oh yeah, I should probably define those conditions. Int up. So if row is less than zero, no, row minus one is less than zero. Then I use this ternary condition. Ternary means it's an if and else condition. So if this is true, if it's less than zero, then wait, if it's great, we want to use the value actually if it's greater than zero, then we just use r minus one. If it's not greater than zero, then we just use zero. So let's just say that it's gonna be negative one. We just want to use zero as a condition. Say almost similar thing with down r plus one. If it's if it's less than if it's less than um, matrix dot length, then we do r plus one and if not, we just do matrix dot length. Wait, so let's see if it's Center equal to matrix dot length minus one. If it's not equal to matrix dot length that minus equals minus one, then we just do matrix dot minus one like that. There you go. Awesome. Now left and right are C minus one. Let's be greater than or equal to zero. L C minus one. Zero. Okay. And the right condition. Oh, here I want to make it much more better. Row, column, like that. 
There we go. So it's going to be much more easier to distinguish between row and column. It's a little bit weirdo. There we go. Column plus one. Because we won't have repeating variables. That's why I did that. It's less than or equal to matrix zero dot length. Um, it's going to be column plus one. And it's going to be matrix zero dot length minus one. All right. Woo. Now let's do the for loop. Int, uh, let's see, let's just call it J for now. J equals, oh, it's kind of hot in here. No, I'll just do IJ. Woo. Sorry, guys, it's hot in the house. Man. I is less than or equal to down and I plus plus. So we're iterating through each of the neighbors right now. Equals L, J is less than or equal to R, J plus plus. All right. And now we create the condition. Um, I'll just call it is true, just to make it easy to understand what's going on. Oh, let's see. Um, so I'll just pass the matrix I and J. So this will make it easier to understand what's going on here. Um, and if it's true, then mine, we increment the mines. Now the reason why I did this is because it's going to be a little messy to understand. So I'm just going to do public boolean is true. And it's going to be taking in that boolean. Did I do this right above? Yeah, good. It's boolean, 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 boolean matrix. And we check with the i and j. So here we have to return. So here we have to check um, if the first um, we check boolean boundaries. Okay. So the first thing we check with Boolean boundaries is I, hmm. wait a second, the boundaries is already taking care of this one. Oh, so we really have to think about it as a matrix, actually. We don't need really need this, um, sorry about that. We don't need this, guys. I think this is good the way it is. Matrix, I, J, and also, you can't have it go on the same mine as the um, as the as the square that we um, chosen. So I have to do this one. I oh yeah, sorry. If, so row cannot equal i and column cannot equal j. Otherwise, this should be good. All right. So to walk you through, let's start with this example. So um, we take the rows and columns of the Boolean matrix. We want to return the same one. Now we go through each of these squares right here and check how many of its neighbors, as defined by the boundaries right here, have a mine. If it's true like this one, and it's not the same square, then we increment that value. Else, uh, no. So let's see if we run this test and see what happens. What did I do wrong here? Hello guys, uh, I found the answer. Okay, sorry about that. Took me a while to understand, but it was this condition right here. I, I have to say that the row cannot be the same and the column cannot be the same. I don't know why did I put a not equal sign, it threw me off, and that's the issue. And therefore, um, if they're both equals the same, you don't want to see that condition, but they're different. Then definitely that is true. And as long as the mind is also a neighbor and that's true, then we can definitely increment it. So if you run those tests, then it's a pass. Then if it hits submit, oh, by the way, don't get distracted by this. I was just clicking buttons while thinking. It's hey, actually looking at the problem for like 30 minutes, maybe. Maybe 20. I don't know how long I was here, but at least I solved it. Glad you guys enjoyed this problem. Please like and subscribe. And if you do, 
I'll send you a free Minesweeper game run in Windows Vista right at your attic. Just look up there and say like, hey, Joshy, 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 and you would find a Windows Vista computer with Minesweeper and you could play all day. Just kidding. Have a good day, guys. <laughs>